Hello everybody, welcome to Coco's Crochet. I'm Litsa and today is our podcast number 80. You know it's my favourite day of the week, it's Thursday, I've got my clipboard ready and my marker. It is the 18th of April 2024. Oh my goodness, the year really is flying by. I can't believe it's been a week since our last podcast and I've already been on school holidays for nearly a week, so that's just crazy. So tonight we've got a few things to share with each other. I've got your makes, which I love to showcase, and I know that you all love seeing what we're all up to. But before we get started tonight, I just want to put a little shout out to our friend Sam over at Manfa's Makes. We will, of course, talk about Tile of the Week Thursday in a moment, but this is because she is only, I think, a one or two or three subscribers away from 2,000. So all of you that go and visit her just to check out the tiles and maybe hang about for other things as well, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so because that would be amazing for her to get those 2,000 subscribers and I'm sure that you will make her so very, very happy if you do so. So many of you are already subscribed, I know that, but if you haven't, like I said, go across there, say hello to her, give her a thumbs up like she asks for, well, doesn't ask for, she deserves, and also subscribe because we just want to get her past that 2,000 mark because she's like knocking on that door, literally knocking on the 2,000 subscribers door. So please, please go ahead and do so if you haven't already done so. So let's start our podcast for tonight. I'm going to put my clipboard down. Now, as always, we start off with Tile of the Week Thursday and we're up to tile number 87. And those of you that have been following along, we are done and dusted with the tapestry crochet tiles and now we're up to the different shape tiles and the first slide it looks like are going to be hexagon so uh, six-sided tiles so i'm very excited to bring you those now for those of you that are brand new or have just walked in and you know you've just joined crochet world on youtube streets let me tell you what this is all about so our friend sam over at manfa's makes she got gifted this book here in happy mail um July 2022 so we're nearly at the two-year anniversary of this um, little crochet along which just you know became something quite organic people just joined in and out whenever they wanted to because Sam pledged to make each and every of these 100 crochet tiles now that's a huge commitment right to um to all of us and I thought you know why not jump along she looked like she was having way too fun on her own and at the time Mike was also you know making the tiles which made it even more special I actually have two of their tiles in my collection which I'll be putting in the blanket which I hope to put together at the end of this um, journey so as I said tile number 87 so after this one only 13 to go so Sam's predicting will finish in July of this year which is pretty awesome now I jumped on at tile number 25 and for each and every tile I use seven different yarns that I use like pull the colors from and they're all this marble eight ply yarn here so it's just an acrylic DK weight yarn and these are the three colors that I use for today's tile because it asks for three colors and each and every tile I use a five millimeter hook so although the tiles will be varying in size and design and, you know, technique, like type of um, tile, I'm hoping to be able to put them all together and they'll be aesthetically pleasing because they all do have the same color palette, the same size hook. So I'm hoping that will assist me when I'm trying to put them together. So this week's tile, as I said, was a hexagon tile. And let me tell you, we've gone back to old school, more like traditional tiles. There are just, you know, some... There were double crochets in there and some, uh, what was it, the treble cluster. So there was uh, five of those, like a five treble cluster, which made like little puff stitches almost. And I absolutely loved making this one. It was only eight rounds, um, three color changes, didn't have to carry any yarn. And it was a very, very enjoyable, but enjoyable. But the thing that I got a little bit confused was with the way the pattern was written. But that's okay because when you stumble, you don't fall because they actually have a chart. And that's been a blessing the whole way through this um, journey because I've relied on the chart more often than not, which has really surprised me because I didn't think I was someone that could read charts very well. But doing this has taught me quite a few lessons in crochet including pattern reading and deciphering what it means so it's been actually wonderful on so many levels even though some of the tiles have been 
crazy or have driven us crazy it's been worth it all the whole time and if you guys want to see everyone that's been involved put the hashtag tile of the week thursday in the search bar and you'll get to see everyone that's joined in but of course sam has a playlist on her channel of each and every tile because she started at tile number one and hasn't missed any i have missed a few but that's okay so today's tile is called cirque i think that's c-i-r-c-e -E, and i'll show you the tile here and of course as always guys josephine has sent in her tile she is amazing she hasn't missed any um and she also when she joined around tile 25 ish she went back and did all the other tiles as well but she even does the crazy hard ones the ones that we look like and our eyes go <laughs> round and round in circles she is just amazing so thank you so very very much josephine for always making this segment extra special so here's the tile there we go guys very very pretty my colors were pretty close and now i'll show you my tile and then i've got josephine's tile on my ipad so here's my one here so i think it turned out very very pretty these are popping they're not too bad and the back is quite neat as well so that's a very very nice tile and as i said because there's going to be i think 10 maybe hexagons maybe i can put them all together we'll see but here's josephine's tile absolutely gorgeous i love your color combination josephine because josephine uses um all different colors from her stash and they're all going to be put together beautifully as well but i absolutely love those colors now i do have a bit of difficulty when i'm trying to do this together but there you go guys actually they look very good together don't they with the pink the lighter pink bringing them together so i imagine a big blanket full of those would look very very pretty so we're done guys tile of the week thursday number 87 tick done and dusted we're up to tile number 88 next week i can't believe it that is pretty crazy right so i hope to bring you a completed tile next week as i said if it continues to be um like this one it was quite um you know joyful to create it after a, you know a few tiles in the back weeks that were a little bit you know challenging for want of a better word so that's it guys now we come up to the best part of all showcasing all of your makes now i do have photos of each and every one of them in my ipad so let me get them out so the first one oh actually the first one is a physical blanket i've got it here with me so my friend lisa from coco's crochet corner last night gave me this gorgeous little blanket here let me bring it up close for you to have a look at it's actually absolutely like so so soft it's the same yarn that i use the baby chenille yarn and she made a beautiful bauble stitch border i absolutely love it now this one here is destined for a little baby boy and he'll be receiving it in the next couple of weeks so it'll be making its way to its very ever forever home before we know it but the stats on this one are as i said baby chenille yarn let me show you while i'm talking about it so you can enjoy its beauty um, 6.5 millimeter hook and it measures 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters or 31 by 31 inches and like i said i just love the bauble stitch um border i would never have thought to do that one so thank you so very much lisa for allowing me to showcase this beautiful blanket before it goes to its forever home so that's our very first one now the rest are all on my ipad so let me just bring them up while i'm talking to you so there are a few so our friend Liza, she has made a spring flower bag oh it is so pretty Look at this absolutely love it now this one is um, from the crochet now magazine issue number 105 for anyone that collects the crochet now magazines it is a cotton acrylic yarn and she's a four millimeter clover hook so so pretty and then she's also made this beautiful water bottle holder there we go guys what a pretty color and this one is made with chenille dk weight yarn i would never have thought to use chenille but it's a nice light one so an eight ply and again she used as you can see her little clover and more four millimeter hook there so very very pretty thank you so much Liza, for sharing those with us now where else so our friend annette she's been very very busy and she sent in all of her projects from um, our cow 2024 so she sent in a little email with um, all the different projects so the very first one is her glasses cases and where is it 
Oh, they're so pretty, Annette. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me just enlarge, make them a bit bigger for everyone to see. Love all the colours. So, so pretty. And the little buttons on there. And um, Annette says that these are from um, the Creator Angel Knits. Very, very pretty. And then there's some cup cozies. Oh, my gosh. Look at all these. Absolutely gorgeous. There we go. I'm trying to get the light out of the way, so I hope I'm not cutting any of them out. Now, these cup cozies are by two um, creators. Lexi's, Lexi loves stitching. And the other one is Pretty Darn Adorable, Adorable Crochet. And in total, she's made how many? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. They are very, very pretty. And then look at all of these, guys, which is the best way to show you this way. I know my iPad and I don't, we're not very good friends when it comes to YouTube, like showing you on YouTube. Now, there you can see that um, Annette's made a whole heap, what's that, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ear warmers. And they're crafted by Cat. And then the water bottle holders are the, sorry, and there's a beanie up there, my apologies. Very, very pretty. Very, very cute. And then she has got water bottle holders. She's been very, very busy. How pretty are these? Oh my goodness, I absolutely love both of those um, colorways. And they're, um, the designer is Diving Ducks Crochet. Very, very pretty. Now, Annette did say that this was her first time for making each and every project and that she's really enjoying it. So that is wonderful. I'm hearing that so much, guys, that a lot of us, including myself, some of the projects that have been coming out of our little basket over there, we've never made them before. So what a great opportunity to try them all together. So thank you, Annette, for sending them all in. I can't wait to see the next lot of projects that you make um, with us and if there's something new that you haven't tried before as well. Now, Shirley has been very, very busy. So I will start off with her wings donations, donations to Rose Likes Crochet. Now, I'd say most of us, if not all of us, are familiar that um, Rose has a charity drive for wings and they were collecting, I think, um, fidget um, toys, uh, little worry worms and these beautiful stress balls. And Shirley made, um, how many, 16 of them? They are absolutely gorgeous. And if you want to see them unboxed, they're in um, Rose's latest Wings video. So I highly recommend you go and watch it because it's always a lot of fun to see what everyone brings in. And then look at this, guys. Shirley has been making beanies for Bumblebee's Mountain Outreach with K and K um, Crochet, our friends KK and Kristen. And in total, she's made 25 beanies. And she also made some shawls, which K and K Crochet are also donating to, um, here they are here, there's five of them. She's bagged them all up so beautifully. And these are going to the nursing home because um, KK and Kristen also support the nursing homes in their local area. And Shirley also has um, made a blanket for Boggy Creek, Boggy Creek Camp, the blanket drive. Um, I think last year Shirley made 30, at least 30, maybe 40 um, of the blankets for them. She did a brilliant job of them. And here it is here. Now, let me, which is the best way to show you? Thank you for your patience, guys. Oh, look how beautiful it is. And I'll tell you about the yarn now. It's absolutely gorgeous. So um, uh, Shirley used Premier Yarn. She says she absolutely loves this yarn. It's the colors Bright Aqua, White and Aqua. And the stitch pattern that Shirley used, she did three double crochet shells with a single crochet stitch in between the shells. And I think there's a photo with the yarn as well. Yes, here it is here. So anyone that's got this available to them, it's the Premier Basic DK yarn. Absolutely gorgeous. So thank you so very much, Shirley, for sharing them with us. All your beautiful makes. And, you know, it's lovely that, you know, we see that most of us, if not all of us, do um, crochet for our community, which is beautiful. And it's so nice to be able to share that with each other and inspire each other as well. Now, our friend Thea has been very, very busy as usual. So let me get the first one. I absolutely love this. This is the best way to show you. How adorable is this? So this is her Monsters Inc. scarf. 
she did say that I think I'm pretty sure she said the green was in her scraps and the blue um, she had to buy because generally she tries to use all her scraps for um, whatever she can obviously her projects and this was inspired by a photo on Pinterest absolutely love it and now she's made a whole heap of bandanas as well oh wow they are they are gorgeous look at these now in total here I counted 19 but there's also another nine that her daughters have decided that they're going to be using for themselves I don't blame them they're so pretty very very pretty and then there are also, oh my gosh, there's just way too many. I didn't count them, Thea, but I'm sure you've made even more. So these are all scrunchies, so hair scrunchies. And she's used all her scrap yarns for these. For what, So what a great opportunity to dip into your scrap bin and make so many gorgeous scrunchies. So thank you so very much, Thea, for sharing them with us. They are all awesome makes. And then our friend Kim, wait till you see all this, so before we talk about Kim, uh, Kim's creations, I just want to say happy, happy birthday to you, Kim. I know you celebrated on Sunday, so hip, hip, hooray. We all wish you a year filled with joy and good health. So thank you for sharing your makes with us this week because we got to say happy birthday to you as well. So look at this. Oh, my gosh, this is cuteness overload. So these little amigurumi um, animals uh, from a crochet along from last Christmas on the Rico R-I-C-O website and um, Kim used Rico yarn which is 100% cotton and there are two photos let me get the next one for you oh my goodness how cute oh my goodness wow so adorable and um, Kim also made a shawl here it is here very very pretty and Kim did use toft yarn. What a beautiful color. And the little pattern on it as well. So that's it, guys. They're all your makes for this week. Thank you so very, very much for sending them in. I really do appreciate it. So congratulations to each and every one of you. You did an amazing job. So if any of you have anything you'd like to share with us, please do not hesitate. Just send it to my email and I will be sure to showcase it. Now, we do have a lot of um, photos to share um, for our Cal 2024. So they will be coming up on Saturday and I will touch on that on a moment. So that's that. Now, what else do we have? Oh, my finished objects. So this week I have a blanket finally. So week three, I finally got it done guys. No hiccups. So I finished this baby blanket that's destined for a baby shower in the next week or so. And I ended up doing a shell border. So, oh my God, another one so squishy. It's like we have twins here today. Isn't it gorgeous? So for this one, it is a corner to corner with a shell um, edging. And I'll show you the yarn while I um, talk about it. So it is this baby chenille yarn here. Oops, the ball band's coming off because it's nearly empty. There it is there, guys. And it is 100% um, polyester, um, 50 grams in each ball. And I use this one here that's got the pinks and the white and the lemon in it and the lemon for the border or the yellow just there. Very, very pretty. In total, I used about um, 10 ball bands, uh, sorry, 10 balls, which is about 500 grams for the um, blanket, which is a nice lightweight blanket as well. Um, even though it's so warm and, oh my gosh, so squishy, I absolutely love it. It is a very lightweight yarn, which is why I absolutely love um, this um, yarn. And I got, it's one of my go-tos because it actually works out very, very fast because I use a 7 millimeter hook for this as well. And, you know, I get to make, when I don't make an error like last week, I, get, I can actually make a blanket probably with... Um, a couple of weeks this size this size blanket here is 100 by 100 centimeters or 39 by 39 inches so there it is there guys i absolutely love it and i'm sure that there's going to be more in my future because god willing there'll be more babies in our future in our family and friends circle so that's that one now, what else have I finished this week? Oh, yes. So I've been working. Some of you might remember that I bought some of these fleece blankets here. So I just bought these from the uh, Big W. 
They're just in black and I bought five because I'm going to be gifting them to my children and their partners for Easter. And um, around them, I'm going to just put the border on, because, like crochet the border, because these came with the little stitching already there, which made it super easy to do the first row, which is the single crochet all the way around. And then these are uh, a five shell, so five double crochets, all US terms, five double crochet shell, skip one, single crochet, skip one, and then the shell across. And I absolutely love this color on this i'm going to be able to use my variegated yarns so and this is going to be so nice and light and soft and easy to pack away on the lounges or on their beds so that's the whole idea that and a nice easter egg and probably some cash let's be real um, so i used this um, i love my spot saver yarn so this one here and this is called black and white but there is blue in here as well so this is basically it's the spot saver prints it's a 10 um ply yarn and i think that's a worsted weight absolutely love this one here and i have been using this awesome six millimeter hook that was gifted to be my by thea because it's got that point and i absolutely love that because i can actually go through you know the little stitch in the beginning and then i can you know continue because it's hard to get under the you know the thread um, at the very start so this has been you know a lifesaver this hook so thank you so very very much Thea now the original plan was to make some borders out of this gorgeous book and it really is a beautiful book but when I went in to um, do the border um, it actually tells you you need to sew them on so you make them as a separate piece so I thought you know what because I have to make another four now before the 5th of May which is when Orthodox Easter will be um, I just thought, you know what, let's stick to the shell stitch. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's very, very pretty. And the great thing is that I'm very, very quick at it. Doing the single crochet is what actually takes the longest. Last night I was in bed with my nightlight and I was getting under there. But the shell stitch just ran away today, maybe an hour or so. I got the whole blanket done. So I need to work on the other four next. I will be using different color variegated yarn on the edges. I do have a few, I need five. So if I have at least three or four different colors, that would be great. So that's that um, finished object as well, which was, you know, um, really nice to be able to do that today. I was very, very happy. Not only to bring it to you, but because I can tick one out of the five done. So that's awesome. Now, those of you who know, know, and if you don't, you're going to know now. I found my chocolate colored hook, my six millimeter or my J, my best friend, my favorite hook in the whole wide world. It is now back. So I'm so, so grateful. And that all that's all because I cleaned my yarn room. I'm so very, very excited. The minute that I found it, I could not wait to let you all know. Um, I look around here and uh, it's just so much more peaceful, you know, to the eye when I look in my yarn room now. I did finish it last night in here. I was actually vacuuming, I think, at around uh, maybe 8.30, 9 o'clock. And I thought, no, it's too late to put out a video now. Best to wait until Friday because I didn't want to overwhelm you with too many videos today. So tomorrow I will give you a little um, tour of what it looks like in here now. And let me tell you, I feel so much better today than I did last Thursday. So that is super cool. But again, I found my best friend, which is so awesome. My best friend friend that's a hook that is now i have been experimenting with my best friend and some um cotton yarn i've always wanted to try the waffle stitch and here it is here guys i think i did a pretty good job now this is just a little um let's call it a swatch because you do need to concentrate when you do the waffle stitch even though it's only two row repeat for those of you that may not know it but it's definitely worth it because it makes an amazing um fabric um and i'm sure some of you can guess why i was practicing i wonder if you can let me know in the comments down below but the thing with this yarn too is uh sorry uh stitch i probably wouldn't make a big project reason being it is a yarn eater but it's definitely worth it because look at the amazing fabric that it makes and as i said it's super squishy 
so opportunity to make it straight away i knew that i had to do this and i did so that's something that i've been practicing this week um, and the other thing which is a whip um, some of you may already know but if you don't i'll let you know that our friend cassandra over at craftably ever after she has a hashtag mix and match challenge for 2024 going and it ends the end of may so there is plenty of time to jump on this and i'll find the photo while we're talking that i want to show to you so what am i referring to so basically uh, maybe three weeks ago now cassandra put out um, a call out for anyone who wanted to design a part like an amigurumi to send some photos in and she did get quite a few submissions and then we got to vote which one was going to be the winner and now we get to make that amigurumi now you know that my amigurumi skills are not wonderful and that i am working on them and i thought you know what a great opportunity not only to just you know support my gorgeous friend cassandra but also to give me that opportunity to practice and you know what's crazy um, there is so much freedom in this but we are bound by three elements and I will show you now so basically the winning um, let me put it this way the winning design uh, never mind like the sparks in the background so it's a white cat with blue overalls and a red mushroom hat so as long as you create something with those three elements you can't stray from that you can enter this challenge and you know what's great there's going to be so many variations on it even though we're going to be making the same thing does that make sense because we won't have a pattern to follow so this brings me to what i'm making and I will talk about more, like about it in more detail when it's finished. But I have started the cat. So it's a white cat. I'm in the process of making the overalls. And then I have to work out how to do the mushroom hat. But this all came about because, and it's tiny, right? Oh, I, you know, I've discovered that with my chubby fingers, tiny yarn and tiny hooks even though this was a three and a half millimeter hook and the yarn isn't that thin let's be real it's probably like a dk or an eight ply um, i can just i can make a bigger amigurumi so much quicker using like velvet yarn or blanket yarn like i made a two to fancy in one day once this has taken me two days just to make this but we're getting there which is the main thing and I get to join along with Cassandra, which is going to be so much fun. So the inspiration, not the inspiration, the pattern for this came, the inspiration is obviously Cassandra's um, mix and match challenge. But as I was walking through Spotlight a couple of weeks ago, because I had this on my mind, as soon as Cassandra told us what the design was going to be, I kept thinking, all right, I've got to look up in my books if there's a cat pattern or go on YouTube. And as I was walking in the aisles in Spotlight, I saw this kit. Now, let's be real. It was meant to be. So I picked it up and I played with it. So I will, like I said, talk to you because I actually got two. I've got the dog and the cat. And I will talk to you in detail about my thoughts about this kit and also show you the finished object for the Mix and Match Challenge. Sorry, the finished cat. Now, my my uh, what is it now? My challenge now will be to find a mushroom hat or some version of it so that I can make it out of red and the browns or what have you. So stay tuned, guys. Hopefully I'll have that done in the next couple of weeks. Look, I know that I have other whips that I should be working on that are amigurumi, like that little doll that I've started, but I don't know about you guys, but I do that all the time. I have a few things sitting around and then I get stuck into something and then I finish that before I even go back to those. But it is what it is. But as I said, um, put in the hashtag, mix and match challenge 2024 and you'll see if anyone's already submitted some of their makes i haven't actually had a look so i'm you know i'm hoping to in the next few weeks they do so because like i said you have until the end of may to do it so that is wonderful so that's um something else that i've been working on whips okay so beautiful we've talked about um everything that i've made or i am making now I've introduced I'm introducing something new and I thought it, I would call it yarn of the month I know it's like the middle of the month but it doesn't matter because it'll just carry over to the next month because sometimes I always think I can't start something new unless it's at the beginning of the month so okay what's yarn of the month right so in this basket here 
that I made for our cow 2024 and I absolutely love this basket are three yarns that are new to me now some of you may have already used them or something similar or you may not have seen them ever before so let me pop that back up there just one moment so out of these yarns just for now and they're going to be filled up all the time I'm going to pick one yarn and I'm going to talk to you about you know like my review on it basically so how it works up a project i'll make a project from it um you know if it compares with other yarns and if i can find anything that you know if you can't find this exact yarn you might be able to find one similar so i'm going to pick this one i decided for this month and it is i have um seen this recently so it's called snuggle cuddle Look at that halo, guys. And it is a super soft yarn. And I have been uh, seeing this in Big W maybe for the last uh, three, four weeks. And I did pick it up about a week or so ago. And I thought at the time, look, I'll just do a little swatch and talk to you about it. And the reason, back in my mind, the reason why I decided to do this firstly and foremostly is because sometimes i i don't know about you but i get carried away when there's a sale and then i'll jump in and go oh my god i really want to buy 20 of these especially when it's a great price now you've been around here long enough to know that i do that but this time i'm going to be smart about it i want to know what i'm buying is it worth me buying 20 of these when they're on a great sale um or is it just going to be something that i you know trial once and say you know what it's okay but it's not for me so maybe i can do that for you as well maybe i'm the middle guy before you actually go and buy something so that you know you know what you're getting yourself into as well of course it's only my review and my thoughts but you know generally we get a good idea um, about something when we see someone else you know that we've known for a long time and hopefully trust in they will give us you know the real result and that's what i plan to do give you my honest opinion on what i think so you know please come along with me for that journey so today is the middle of the month so by the middle of next month so anywhere after the 15th of may in actual fact it probably works out better for me because a lot of things happen you know the beginning and at the end of months Oh my gosh, this is a fluffy one, let me tell you. Um, so yeah, by the middle of May, I should be able to bring you, or I am aiming to bring you a little review on this yarn, as I said, have a little make for you, let you know how far it goes, and maybe give you some other yarns that might be similar in different parts of the world, because we don't all live in Sydney, Australia, and we don't all have spotlight accessible to us but i'm sure that i can find other yarns that are very very similar to this one so that's yarn of the month it will live in here in this basket so i'll be filling that up with different yarns as we go through the time and i'm hoping that this is something that you guys will enjoy you might have some suggestions for a yarn like this you might have already used a yarn like this i certainly haven't so i'm very very excited and if you have please please give me some suggestions in the comments down below you know i'm always open to your suggestions and i take them seriously and i might just be able to create something from what your suggestions are so i'm going to put this one here so i don't forget this is the one that we chose so that's our yarn of the month guys i'm actually very very excited about this because like i said i want to be a smart shopper not just jump in because oh my gosh it's a great sale yeah which is I've, I've done that often enough and you know what again tidying up my yarn room taught me that lesson so it's great oh i'm growing up guys <laughs> maturity is awesome now cal 2024 for us um this saturday which will be the 20th of april project number eight guys project number eight can you believe it eight out of 12 we'll be drawing that out of our little basket over there so get all your projects um, for number project number seven in which was the um, pot holders by friday midnight to me and that's when you'll do your tally you can get the photos to me later if you wish and i'll showcase them on thursday's podcast but if you want us to see them this saturday please put them in by friday night um, and then we'll draw project number eight. So I'm very, very excited about that. And as I said earlier, I've got so many to show you. So many of you have been busy. There are some 
crazy funny ones there are some very very cute ones there are some you know like more traditional ones i myself have made some which i'd never made before i've always wanted to make pot holders but this time i had no choice really well i did but i loved making them so yes i'll bring them to you on saturday so stay tuned for that i'm very very excited um as i said sorry i can tick that off um my um the yarn room tour i'll give bring it to you tomorrow and what else do we have here guys oh where are we yarn of the month okay now i think that's it for crochet um thank you so very much for you know hanging out with me for all of this um, but if you want a little bit of life, I've got a video for you, which is about two minutes long, um, of the granny flat. Because we spent the whole weekend, um, so last Saturday and Sunday, painting um, all the ceilings and all the walls. I think the walls got three coats, the ceilings got two, and the ceilings have one more to go, just a touch up. Um, the bathroom is fully tiled. Those of you that saw Belle's, um, Belle B's vo um, visit, you would have seen that she was supervising the tiling of the bathroom. It looks awesome. Now, the lighting in there isn't great, so you'll get an idea of what's happening. Um, the kitchen will be coming in next week, so I'll bring that update to you in the next week or so. Um, but just to give you an idea of the colour, because it's a little bit difficult to see in the video, because when I was videoing a couple of hours ago, the sun was almost setting. Um, and it was a dark and gloomy day here today. Then the sun came out. It was just a crazy mixed bag. So, okay. So the color is this. We had a big drum, like a big drum of um, cream colored um, wall paint and the same uh, brand. So it's like a matte color, matte satin, I think, not a satin. It's not shiny at all. Anyway, and the other one was a gray. So it had a gray tinge. So very white, both of them, one with gray, one with um, cream in it. And we were like, we don't want either on the wall. So we did a little pot, a test of the two together, and it was brilliant. The color is awesome. I absolutely love it. Um, and as Steve says, depending on how the light hits it, you know, the sunlight or the, you know, the house lights, it's going to give a little slightly different effect. So I said to my son and his fiance, every day it'll be like a different color of the rainbow in there. So I'm so excited. Not quite a different color of the rainbow, but you know what I mean. So let me just grab that video for you. And I can just show it to you here. I tell you what, I had paint in my hair, my mouth, um, all over my body. My clothes were ridiculous. I'm surprised I got any on the walls. And going, climbing up and down that ladder, because I was doing all the cuts everywhere. Um, oh my gosh, you know, it was such a great workout. It was a lot of fun because my, like Steve, my son and myself did it. And we just laughed. There was 80s music both days. You know, we were reminiscing, we were singing. It was just awesome. You can make a hard job fun, let me tell you. So where's our little video? Here we go. So are you ready, guys? Let me get the volume on. We've had a little bit of, um, whoops funny connection here so let me see if i can get the volume as close as i can get yeah. it to the true color because of the light coming in from the windows it's about 4 35 o'clock in the afternoon now and the sun's sort of setting but that gives you an idea of the color so now we're in the lounge room i love it that the walls and the ceilings are all painted over there you can see um oops some appliances for the kitchen they'll be coming in tomorrow to drop off the kitchen which will be going on that wall over there and um, then they'll be installing it on Monday which is very very exciting um, everything you see on the floor is just covering the floorboards there's the actual floorboards there um, to protect them obviously and then as we're walking through um, we're coming into the little area here, which is going to be the walk-in wardrobe. As you've seen many a time. I'm trying to get some light in here, but it's difficult. Here's the bathroom. Again, very hard to see, but all the walls have got the tiles on them. We've got everything, you know, the ceiling's done. There's a little alcove here for... There it is. I love that for shampoos, conditioners and that. And then as we walk around, hope I'm not making anyone dizzy, we come into the bedroom. 
again, very hard to see and hear what's going on other than everything's freshly painted. Look at that, I love it. And then again, we walk out and there's the front door. We're going to be changing the front door. But there's your living area, like that's your lounge area there. <laughs> but it's not going to be this dark and gloomy because we don't have any other lights in here at the moment. So that's a little update, guys. Thank you. So that's it, guys. Um, we have been very, very busy and so very excited because the kitchen's coming in now, as I said. Um, and then after that, really, like... Um, just a few more appliances will come in and then the children just have to buy their, you know, lounge setting and their, if they're getting a new bed, I'm sure they are. I haven't really asked them because everything else will be there. Because really, like today is the 18th of April, 7th of July is only a few months away. So um, now's the time that, you know, we're going to have to scurry and get everything done. We need to do the garden still. Um, still have to buy a dress, but hey, you know me, that'll be lastminute.com. Um, and have to write a little speech, which I'm very excited about. I do practice all the time in my head. I just have to write it down. So that's it. You know, life's been great, guys. I'm on school holidays, as you know. I got to spend the day with my son today. We spent about three, four hours just watching a movie together. It was like the good old days when he was little. Um, we um, watched a documentary, one of his heroes, um, an NBA basketball player. That was awesome. It's really nice to see that. He um, admires someone that's quite wholesome and family orientated. You know, it wasn't about the money and he wasn't all, you know, he wasn't about the show. This guy is, you know, a true hero in my books. So it was nice to hang out with my son and watch that with him. Um, yeah, because, you know, they grow. As you know, all of you that have grown children know that we need to let them fly and be and make decisions for themselves and hope that all the chats, all, you know, the times we've, you know, communicated with them, it sticks in here and they make good choices for themselves. So it was actually a nice afternoon, which I wouldn't have done if I was at work, right? So that worked out really, really well. So my week has been um, pretty much in here, cleaning up, which was awesome some crochet and um yeah just chilling guys i have been ta you know taking the opportunity to just do very very little i always like to um reset and that's the wonderful thing about working for the department of education but anyway now i've gone right off tangent and i've kept you for way too long i hope you're all doing very very well i always say that and i always mean it i hope you got some crochet time in and until i see you all very very soon take care everyone bye bye for now